Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. It is us, Dragon's Greed Gaming. You are joining us for episode six of Tale of Four Gamers for Warhammer Fantasy Battles, sixth edition. Right? Six? That's what we're doing. Uh, we're back. It is the end of month five. We're at the we're nearing the end here as we've got one month after this to go. But we're here to talk about what we've done so far, show off more progress, and hear from the gang. So, fellas, hello. How's everybody doing today? Doing good. 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 Excellent. Yeah, good. Ryan's rocking our uh, Conan t-shirt. Good Bro. shit, man. <laughs> Love yeah. it. I just uh, got some more stuff for the Conan RPG because they, uh, they've they been doing their clearance sale the last couple months. And uh, I got a bunch of the card decks, which nice. normally I think run for like 15 bucks. They were on sale for like two bucks each. Oh, really? I was like, yeah, I'd be yeah. stupid not to buy these at this point. You know, Wait, yeah. were you getting those straight off the site? Yeah, uh, Mephidius announced at the end of last year that uh, they were not going to have the license anymore. And so everything started going on sale to clear out their warehouse and their stock. And like every month, the sales gotten better and better. So I've gotten almost the entire Conan range pretty much at a discount. So a few books I don't have, but I've got most of the major stuff and like all the adventures and stuff. So that'll probably be on the channel one day, you know, whenever we get there. Uh, sign me up. I'm ready. Yeah, this yeah. Is... I'm not. I'm not as big of a Conan as, as a lot of people, so I don't. My knowledge is limited to like the movies and Arnold mostly. But um, it was too cool to pass up. A lot of cool old sword and sorcery artwork there. But I, I learned earlier this year that he had 274 words in the first film as the main character. Oh yeah, I believe it. They uh, there's something similar with John Wick Four. It's like as the John Wick movies have gone on, his word count has gotten less, but his paycheck has gone up. It's brilliant. That's how you do it, man. I utter a hundred words in a movie and get fifteen million dollars. Good shit. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna start off with our undead boy, Eric. Uh, tell us what you got going on this month. What are we looking at? And uh, how else you been? Hey. Uh, yeah. So things have been pretty good. Um, been very busy at work lately um, on this new project that's coming due. Uh, so. Uh, it was nice to have kind of a quieter month with uh, the last two models for my thousand points of Strigoi. So I have a second vampire. Uh, I went with the uh, Games Workshop's Boxing Day limited edition Ghoul King um, on a throne. Um, I just really like that model and couldn't pass it up as a Strigoi player. Um, I went a little bit uh, different with the little bit uh i think brighter with the greens this time uh, with the highlights uh, i did something a little bit different than i was doing with my last vampire um, so yeah, i mean it started still with a contrast wash and then just kind of built up everything from there i gotta um, say I, i've never seen the back of the throne before seeing this picture so i didn't realize it had the cool little uh, skulls on the back. Oh there. yeah, like built in, yeah, like yeah, cool. strapped up. <laughs> um, the the banshee was the the other thing that um, I had been waiting to do because I just couldn't get the model stripped. Um, I had put it in uh, purple power, uh, simple green, uh, nail polish remover. <laughs> finally, yeah, finally it was the acetone nail polish remover. I just bought a new bottle of it and just like soaked it for a week. Yeah. And I was finally able to strip it enough to uh, to get some new paint on it. Is that it. we're using a gray primer? Is that what we're looking at here in the picture? Yeah, yeah. So I have I use gray primer because I I usually mostly paint world leaders, so I usually go from gray to white. Yeah, I can't. You can't really even tell that this model was painted before. I mean, once you prime it, it looks like it was. It's mostly stripped anyway. So yeah, old school and, man. Uh, I remember those old banshees. Yeah, and I do not miss working with uh, metal models. No, <laughs> no. I don't mind the metal models. Um, so this this will put um, this will make a thousand points for the back of the book Strigoi army list. Um, that I'm able to build now. Awesome. Um, the last things that I'm going to do for the last month are going to be the Vargeist unit, these mm -hmm. three, which aren't technically a sixth edition unit, um, but they were the last models that I had. Um, so I think they get introduced in eighth edition as kind of like a 
more bestial vampire hybrid. Yeah, that's too bad. There's a lot of cool stuff from Eighth Edition that uh, isn't in the previous things. Like you know, the Empire's got the uh, the Wizard War machines. You know, the Celestial mm-hmm. Hurricanum and uh, the Demigriff Knights. Yeah, cool stuff there. Yeah. Well, if we ever play it, I'd let you use Vargais. We can make rules for them in Sixth Edition. It shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> yeah. What's what's the worst that can happen, right? Exactly. <laughs> Oh, cool. So that's that's the last thing that you own for Vampire Counts, then. Yes. Yeah. So nice. I have a. I'm gonna get some photos of like all my armies. Like I'll do a picture of my thousand points, picture of everything I've painted during the challenge, and then a full picture of everything I got for vampires. I'll submit next week. Yeah, we'll do some. We'll do some group uh, group photos. Well, that's awesome, man. What does it? How's it feel? You're gonna have a collection finished with no models and backlog good um it's been a long time since that's happened <laughs> i think the last time i finished an army was around 2014 15 when my 40k world leaders were done and then you know you get that bug and start buying again yeah army's never truly done right but it uh i mean we've we've done what we set out to do then if if yeah. you don't have any models in the backlog at least for this army that's a that's a win yes so. i'm counting it Awesome. Cool, man. Uh, so anything at this point is just extra gravy then. So that's that's even better. Cool. All right. Uh, well, we'll step on to my stuff then on over to the Chaos Wastes. So this month, um, for those of you uh, listeners that may not be aware, we're also doing a Warhammer 40,000 Tale of Gamers. Uh, Brian and Eric are on that along with two of our other friends, Ernie and Eddie. And so that started last month. So here in the real world, we're actually doing kind of two of these at the same time. So luckily for at least myself and Eric, we're kind of at the end of our fantasy stuff. So we've got time to split between the two. But um, I did the Dragon Ogres finally, and they were worth the wait. Uh, These were so much more fun to paint than those stupid knights. of course, it's because there's a lot of contrast paint involved here, as you can see with the green and the skin. Uh, but man, they turned out awesome. I like them. I got them to rank up fairly well without bumping into each other too much. And uh, the armor turned out a little darker than I was hoping. Can't quite see the gray highlights underneath. <laughs> I think I went a little too heavy with the uh, the contrast paint. But uh, otherwise, I'm pretty happy. The, the claws uh, turned out. I was doing a lot of... Uh, taken a lot of examples from like iguanas and lizards and stuff and a lot of them have like black talons for their their claws and their nails so that's what i tried to do especially on the lower limbs i did it for the the hand nails as well um and then you can see where you can see kind of scales on the upper torso i tried to do like a mix of the green with the flesh so it kind of blends a little bit uh i'm by no means an expert when it comes to blending uh, I really don't ever blend because it's way too time consuming, but I think for how easy and fast it was, it gets the idea across. So I thought it looked weird that all of a sudden at the waist down, they all of a sudden were green and not, you know, flesh colored. Uh, but otherwise, I'm happy with them. I'm still not sold. I'm not super pleased with the snow. Um, I've tried a couple different methods when I attach it to the base, and I haven't found anything that I really like. I wanted it to look more like it was just kind of loose snow that was blowing across the plains rather than like a pile of snow, but I just can't quite get it right. So I'm a little disappointed with that, but overall, um, they're done. And this marks a thousand points for myself. Well, a little bit more than a thousand because I got the two units of Warhounds. But uh, so yeah, I have finished my goal and some of my stupid movement trays finally shipped uh, this week. So I've got movement trays for this unit. I've also got movement trees for the knights. Not that you need it for the dragon ogres, but I figured I like the look for the army. So uh, if I get those in time, that'll be what I try to paint up for next month. And I'm also, as you can see in my images here, I've been working on the chariot that Brian gave me. So I did manage to clean it all up. Uh, It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but breaking this thing off the base and getting the horses detached from the chariot. You can see the the crossbar had to come apart there, but nothing broke, so that's good. Um, And you can see in the images here, those those little tiny harnesses and the the reins, those are the bits that were missing, which 
I, I don't blame Brian's kids. I think anybody would have lost those stupid things. They're so tiny and minuscule. Um, and I, at first I didn't even realize they were missing. It's one of those things you don't really notice. You know, this is not something you would have seen in fifth edition Warhammer. It's just like, oh, the guy has an imaginary bowstring. Um, but I got these for like just a couple bucks on eBay, even with shipping. So it, uh, we have a complete one now. I'm gonna try to get the chariot painted, um, but I'm not a fan of the guy with the giant cape, the Chaos Warrior. If you look in that picture, I think the cape looks comically huge. And I just, I don't know, it looks really goofy to me. So I might try to paint up the Games Day model that I was talking about, the two axes as the guy riding the chariot, or just to be like a character in a chariot so I could use it as both. But um, there's going to have to be a little bit of magnetizing or something so I can swap them out. And I don't know if I'm going to have the time to do all that. So we'll get as much done as we can on the chariot and get the movement trace finished if they get here in time. And then, I mean, that's pretty much it for this army. I do still have uh, a couple Chaos Warriors left from the box. And then I've also got the 10 Chaos Warriors from the get it, Getting Started set, uh, from the AOS Getting Started set which I would do eventually, but that was not part of the army. I just got that to get the knights at a really good price. So um, while I do have a few things in back stock, it's not like mountains of models. It's like one unit maybe. So um, considering I just started this and didn't have any chaos stuff when we began this project, I'm pretty happy with that. I didn't go overboard. So nothing's wasted and uh, we're almost done. So looking forward to uh, getting the group photo I've already got everything sitting on the shelf and it, it looks great now that it's all painted. So very exciting. So that's my progress for the month and we'll see what we can finish up uh, next next time. So that is my stuff. Let's uh, take a look at what we got next. Brian, tell us about it, what's going on in the uh, land Just of real quick, I, I'm, yeah. as we were talking about that, I was I kind of have this memory of those reins and like working with my boys and they were like clipping stuff out and they broke, like they clipped them out and oh, I wouldn't them. be surprised. Yeah, and I remember, I remember having this conversation because they were little, right? They're only twelve and thirteen now, so they were little when they were working on this, and they were kind of like, "I think I broke it, Dad." I'm like, "No, nah, it's cool. Don't worry about it. You're never even going to see that anyway," <laughs> you I know. Just, and just like, yeah, did, didn't want them to get discouraged. I was like, "Yeah, we well, you know that's an optional piece. We don't need that one." Yeah, um, yeah I, I kind of vaguely remember <laughs> at least like one of them breaking like that. Um, and that I think that other dude with the cape. I think the problem is that like he's standing like really still and yeah. it's like and then like there's nothing else about him that's like dynamic and then this cape is like flowing all around <laughs> like like the wind hits only his cape or something yeah. like that you know yeah um especially considering anyway. he's riding in a chariot and he's standing as like perfectly still like a statue you know? yeah. yeah yeah like if it starts or stops too quickly he's gonna just come right off it <laughs> um so yeah, for me, this uh, month was all about these two characters. It was the, uh, the, so the guy, I don't know what he was originally, like a questing knight or something. Uh, this is part of Dr. Gabe's haul that he shared with me. Uh, he's, he's the one with, the, he's blind and he's got the kid with the little like telescope type thing on his back. Um, I don't know what he was meant to be originally, but he's my battle standard bear paladin now. Okay. Um, so that's the, the biggest of the banners is, is uh, him so I worked on him and then the fellow with like the falcon on his arm is going to be my, my paladin paladin until like okay. until so I'm kind of building out options now so he'll be the paladin until I finish the guy on the pegasus so you know I can and I'm also going to work on uh, um, a uh, damsel on a horse so then I can kind of slot them in depending on how the points go but in theory if I give him a magic banner, this can be a thousand point army right now. Uh, so the, it's the two paladins were what I worked on, uh, the, the fellow with the hawk and uh, the battle standard bear. And I, I enjoy these guys actually more than more than I have like their kind of rank and file knights for some reason. Sometimes the rank and file knights get a little tedious for me. Oh yeah. Um, uh, but these guys were good fun. I think especially because the one night with the, the kind of quirky stuff with the kid on his back and like, you know, looking out for him. Um, but yeah, oh, and sorry. And the other thing I worked on mostly this uh, month was the uh, fences, the uh, the like the uh, I don't know what you call it. they're like hedgerow garden fences, right? Which are going to mm -hmm. be in place of my stakes. So these guys are going to rather than take stakes with them everywhere they go, they're going to move an entire fence. 
<laughs> up and down. And I actually had a bit of a nightmare with this. Uh, so I'd ordered a bunch of stuff that was 3D printed. And these weren't, these were cast. And I did, I, for some reason, I just had 3D printing in my head. And uh, these were cast, and so I didn't wash them first. Oh no! Uh, and <laughs> you know that you know how I feel about release agent. This stuff, oh, yeah. release agent, was like anti-paint. Like even the primer was like beating up and just rolling off it. And I was like, what is going on? Like, and then I was like, oh wait a minute, these weren't 3D printed. These were cast, and they've got that gel on them. Brian and I have a very special relationship with uh, <laughs> release agent. Yeah. After our uh, experiments with uh, Ethereum. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I can only imagine. I, well, I'm assuming it was easier to clean than that stuff, though. Oh, way easier, and it came. It actually came off. And plus, now I, I know like every trick in the book. So I, I did <laughs> soap. I did a little baking powder in there just to be sure. Toothbrushed it, and then they're they're fine now. Uh, but at first, I was kind of like, I I don't have time for this. Like, what's going on? You know? Yeah. And and it just it was like that. I don't know why I was just in this mindset of like 3D printing. Everything's 3D printed now, and I was like, "Oh no, wait! There's still other ways of doing this." Yeah. Well, plus, um, once you're, you know, you're getting ready to just prime them, then it's like, "Oh no, I got to go back and wash these." Like, yeah. if you have that ready from the start and it's part of your ritual, it's not that big of a deal, right? But then when you got to yeah. interrupt your flow to do something like that, you know, same thing when I was building some of these guys, it's like, oh, wait, I didn't do the magnets, for example. Right. And in some cases, it's not a big deal, but still it's like, ah, it's like one thing I got to go back and do if I had just planned it from the start, you know, and now my flow feels messed up. Yeah. So all in all, for, for these guys, I mean, yeah, technically there's a thousand points. I'm still going to like be building out the odds and ends. If I wanted to go to 2000, I've still got a, a whole bunch of Gabe's uh, knights. I think I would do one of the like questing knights, probably a unit of would be what I'd add next. I might start doing that. Um, so then you're, you're th sorry to interrupt you, but your thousand points is the two units of archers, the unit of knights and the characters. And the two characters, well, three characters, because there's the damsel. Yeah, uh, she's okay. in there somewhere. Yep. The damsel, the battle standard bearer, and then the paladin that is the uh, the champion or whatever the general. Cool. Um, yeah. So that I mean, it, it comes out, uh, but you know, like I'm, I'm gonna keep. So I still have another twenty bowmen. <laughs> <laughs> it never stops. Uh, yeah, I know. Like when you were talking about backlog, backlog, I was like, oh, I still got a backlog. I, I hate the, Looks like this is gonna be two thousand points, and plus Gabe dumping all that stuff like it, uh, it it's like a blessing and a curse because now I'm like, well, all right, there's a lot of stuff to work with here. Right? Yeah, it's like, um, oh, it's free, but it's still a pile of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, speaking of these Bowmen, uh, back when I was working at the Games Workshop in Ranhurst, so this was like well. probably around sixth edition ish. Yeah, because it was Storm of Chaos time. Um, or maybe fifth edition. No, probably sixth. Do you yeah, remember? Yes, I remember that. Yeah. Do you remember? I don't know if you were there, but we we did a game called Bretonian Bowling, and literally <laughs> what? Because those models, those old uh, one piece static uh, monopose yeah. archers, those used to be the models that we would use for demo painting. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So the company would send you like a box of these archers, and you would just spray them with primer and then have like five or six of them sitting on the demo table yeah. we had so many that someone made a game called bretonian bowling where they sprayed them all white and painted a red stripe around the centers like the bowling <laughs> pins and then you know because they're normally this was back when bretonian archers were in like lance formation like the knights yeah. and the wedge we would set them up like a wedge so that like bowling pins and we would actually roll sorry cat we would roll actual dice like bowling balls at the models <laughs> and that was like a little event somebody made up for a I, I wasn't there for that but that that does explain why there are the, those archers are so easy to find on ebay for oh, nothing yeah, yeah. They, there's just in, in you know some of the other rare, the stuff is a lot more rare like the knights go for like a lot of money but these these one piece archers are are just like saturated oh yeah um well, with Old World coming, you probably won't have to worry about those crazy prices because uh, we know that knights are coming back. So, oh my um, God. yeah, I'm hold your wallets, folks. I'm just when I'm like, uh, GW's doing this to me where I'm like, I'm kind of, I'm done painting Bretonians. You know, I'm, I've <laughs> like, I have so many of these guys. And, and I have to say one thing, 
uh, when I set out to do this, I was thinking like, oh, I'm going to make a slightly more clean army. And I actually really like the fact that these guys, uh, they're clean by Bretonian standards, right? But they still look really kind of gritty and like yeah. they look like they've been in the mud a bit, which I, I, I really, that's something I like in Bretonian. More than any other of the fantasy armies, I like them to look like they are um, campaigning. You know, they're, they're, they're a bunch of peasants. They're supposed to be filthy. Yeah. Well, the color scheme looks cool. Uh, it's something yes. different. Uh, you know, you don't always see Bretonian armies with a unified color scheme, but I've always thought they look good, even though the, the lore suggests otherwise, at least old lore did. Um, and I will say, just to point out, your walls will probably be much better to game with uh, logistically than with stakes, because yeah. now units that charge them can actually rank up properly <laughs> and not be having, you know, models keeping you like three inches apart. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always like they were always like they were like fighting across like this span that was uh, <laughs> just throwing rocks at each other. Or something. Yeah, yeah, cool, man. Um, so what's uh, for next month other than uh, so the guy on the Pegasus? The Pegasus is going to be the key. Uh, then it's also going to be the um, the uh, damsel on a horse, the classic damsel on a horse. Uh, compliments of Doctor Gabe again. Um, and so those will be my two that's my gonna be my two main focus and then uh if there is other time and i'm not sure there will be between my other nights the 40k nights uh i i'll be either working on those 20 bowmen or uh the knights the questing knights i think you deserve a break from bowmen brian don't I torture do yourself like that I, i'm saying that and i'm like you know that's never actually gonna happen so <laughs> Back on eBay they go. <laughs> <laughs> if any listeners need Bretonian bowmen, we yeah, got them. <laughs> I've got like 20 and then some command structures, yeah. Awesome. Cool, man. Well, you've uh, you've reached the end pretty much then as we have, so congratulations. Thank well you. done. Well done. And that is going to lead us off back to more undead shenanigans, the land of the dead, Nekahara. What's going on, Sean? Mr. Reliable, Mr. Robot, Mr johnny american yep that's me johnny american reliable <laughs> not a robot but i get where the reference is coming from yeah yes mm -hmm. um yeah so this this month i was going to paint the tomb prince and the lich priest but they still haven't arrived Ooh. um they're coming big from rip. overseas <laughs> yeah big rip um i didn't look at the the etsy store where it was actually located when i ordered so it's like in australia so oh uh, yeah yep going through customs um so fingers crossed it comes in within the next couple weeks um so instead i just uh decided to paint the uh horseman that i'd gotten way earlier in the game uh or the campaign and planning um and so i uh, had finally decided on like the red after having painted a bunch of red really like that color scheme and so i went with the the red and then regular bone the like Henry dust or Xandri dust spray um, a few washes here and there to get the red a little bit darker and make sure the bone doesn't look too well bland or plain um, and then just started uh, highlighting up got a little brown in there for some of the like halves of weapons and all of the um, straps across the horses so the horses have like leather straps holding stuff together as well as they're all just like covered yeah, in like mummy bandages bandages yeah okay yeah. so um that was actually pretty cool to paint because it, it made it not like the regular tomb kings where it's just hey a naked horse and a naked skeleton Have right fun. yeah there's not even a saddle it's like how's he how's he sitting on yeah that? yeah um so that was pretty cool <clears throat> and then i tried layering up the red and the bone and uh yeah so that's what you see in that last picture that I just sent. I forgot uh, Discord only limited me to nine pictures, so I forgot to send that last one. Um, uh, you can send it. I'll, I'll put it in the video. I have to yeah. say, man, these skeleton horsemen look legit compared to the old Games Workshop. They're ones. I mean, so cool. Yeah, I'm I'm not a hater on old Games Workshop models, believe no. me, folks. I, I love the nostalgia as much as the next guy, but... Yeah. Even when I was buying and playing Toon Kings back when they first came out, the Horseman unit in particular was always underwhelming. It's just, yeah. you know, all those old GW skeletal horses, they're so static and, and there's nothing going on. And then yeah. you've got this skeleton guy who's got his basically 
the little contact point of the bottom of his pelvis attached yeah. to the top of one vertebrae of the horse. It doesn't look very believable. It was awful. But these, yeah. yeah, they've got a full saddle. They've got stirrups. Uh, they actually have reins that attach to the saddle instead of trying to attach them to one of his hands. Yeah. Um, very yeah. cool. Yeah. And the, the archer in particular, man, that upper body looks so good. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, it looks really cool. And there's a lot of different, like, pose options with these, too. So... Um, well, I, th I think it helps too that he's actually drawing the arrow. If I recall yeah. the old G GW ones, they're just holding their bow. Yep, like just that, like that. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks so. okay for the guys on foot because they're like marching, but the guy on horseback is like. Yeah, it was it was not very cool <laughs> compared to these, which very cool. Um, uh, you've done well. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so, um, if I get the heroes in and finish them, that'll put me around like the nine fifteen mark. So right. I'd have just enough points for a Toon King Scorpion. Oh, yeah. Hell so. yeah. I have to say, um, though, seeing the horse on the base, it's so precarious <laughs> with its tiny little hooves. Like, yes. Could they make more of a small contact point for this model? I filed the hooves down so they were flat so I could get a solid contact I imagine, point. yeah, because yeah. like this, this one, like his yeah. his front hoof is not even touching the ground. It's just like the edge of his hoof. Like, yeah, come on. Yeah, that's my one like real complaint is that the the contact points are not very good. Did you pin it or just glue the the, the thing to the base? Uh, glued. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. I guess they can't improve on every aspect of the model, right? Right. But... I mean, you know, <laughs> still a very cool model, and I'm very pleased with it. So, and I really like the red color scheme that I ended up going with. I think that's that's a, an interesting look. So yeah, it, it definitely strikes out against uh, the rest of the kind of the, the lesser, the lighter palette. So yeah. So what is the plan? What are you going to try to? Well, I guess you know we've we've only seen like bits and pieces. We haven't really seen like a completed regiment yet. So yeah, I'm, I'm a little worried, Sean. But you know, <laughs> can you can you dissuade my fears? Yeah, yeah. So your your fears will be dissuaged when we post the pictures. You'll get full regiments. Okay. Are they going to be based? Probably not. Probably oh, not. Oof, yeah. big rip. None Don't of these, be that none guy, of these come with actual base, uh, like bases. So I just get like this weird cardboard stuff. Um, well, you just, just got to put some sand on there and call it a day. It doesn't need to be like <laughs> these. I mean, you don't need to do like something crazy like I did with all these fucking ice shenanigans. We'll see. Like, we'll see. Yeah. I'll see what I can do. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, just I'm, I'm kind of a base snob like that. Like when I see a fully painted oh. army and the bases aren't done, I'm like, wow, you apparently. Suck. Yeah. Yes, I'm I'm picking up on that now. Especially when they don't even prime the base. It's like they painted the model, then glued it to an unprimed base. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Technically, these bases are primed. They're primed yeah. sand. I dust. mean, at least there's that, right? So, yeah. Yeah. And paint the edges of your base, okay? Nothing yeah, yeah, makes okay. me more angry than when I see a nicely painted model and they got like the base is actually done and then the side is like slopped with the colors for the base. And it's like, it looks yeah. so unfinished. It's like, ugh. I'm never a fan of like the green circle around the bases either, personally. I, I always paint them black. Like, oh, yeah, like... yeah. Well, whatever color. I've done weird colors before. Sometimes sure, they sure. can be interesting. But um, yeah, folks, paint paint your base rims, okay? Trust me, <laughs> it looks better. So um, cool. So then what what is exactly is your thousand points? Because we've seen a, such a scattering of models over these last couple months. So uh, 20 regular sword and board guys, uh, 10 uh, archers, five uh, horsemen. Um, they're horse, the heavy horsemen technically, but they don't give you enough pieces for all spear and shield. Um, one tomb prince, one lich priest, and then bone giant and um, the scorpion. Do you have a scorpion yet? No. Okay. I was going to say, I don't think we've seen him. So. No. So that one's that one's. Also, have you seen coming. any good alternatives online, or is it better? The, to, is, I'm assuming the GW one's probably a ripoff yeah. at this point. Yeah, the, the GW one's pretty expensive, but there are some pretty good alternatives online. Cool. So, all right. Awesome. Well, there you have it, folks. That is the end of month five. We have one month remaining as we finish here and we cross the finish lines of whatever we have done. So, uh, I hope everyone's enjoyed what we've done so far. You know, uh, as you can see, we're hyped about Old World. We're hyped about Warhammer. I hope you guys are too. 
um, and uh, you know, avoid all the noise and all the the nonsense of all the naysayers out there. Uh, we're getting Warhammer back, and that's what matters. And hopefully, <laughs> our work here has inspired you to get something done for Old World. Or if not, if Old World ends up not being what we all hope it is, we've got eight editions of the game that we can still play. So. Not that eighth edition was an addition, but you know, if you're one of those people, that's fine. Everybody has, everybody makes mistakes. Um, but seriously, if you're, uh, if whatever it is, you're a Warhammer fan, play Warhammer, New World, Old World, whatever it is, uh, and hopefully, uh, yeah, show us what you guys have been working on. And uh, if you have been enjoying this, be sure you check out our 40k Tale of Gamers as well. We got five guys on that uh, stream, and we're uh, jumping on the 10th edition hype train. Our first episode is out, so you can meet the crew, see what we're going to be working on, and our next episode will be out. Uh, well, by the time of this recording, it'll probably already be out, so uh, that'll be taking us through the rest of the year. So thank you all so much for stopping by, and uh, gentlemen, as always, it's been a pleasure. Good seeing Absolute everybody. Absolute pleasure. Yeah, awesome. great to see you. Yep. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to sign off then, folks, so we will see you on the flip side, same time, same place, nighty night. Hello listeners, Great Unclean One here. I just wanted to thank you for taking your time to watch this video. For more content like this, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons? And if you're a fan of role-playing games, then be sure to check out one of our actual play series. We've got campaigns of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, Alien the Roleplaying Game, and Warhammer 40,000 Wrath and Glory, with plenty more to come. Finally, a huge thank you to all of our Patreon members. Your support means the world to us, and you help push the channel to even greater heights. We simply could not do this without all of you. And if you'd like to help support the channel yourself, uh, even more than a like or subscribe, consider joining our Patreon and get yourself some cool rewards. Link in the description below. Thanks again, and we will see you in the next one. Same time, same place, 99.